Welcome to Christian Faith Ministries, where Drs. Greg and Deidre Thomas are the pastors. As we embrace the future together with so many uncertainties, we are here to help you survive and thrive during this pandemic and beyond. Join us today as we declare war on poverty and sickness. Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Thomas, and I want to get right into the Word of God today because this is the 12th lesson, praise God, on how to live your best life. Now, you know, as I was like preparing for this message, I wanted to talk about some things that you need to live your best life. You know, if you're going to live your best life, you know, we've talked about being diligent and we've talked about being faithful and we've talked about, you know, the power of your words and the power of your thoughts and all of those things. And if you apply those biblical principles, you know, you're going to find yourself elevated and being promoted and shifting to a whole nother level in your walk, praise God, and living your purpose. That's what we're talking about in living your best life. How do I live my purpose? And today I want to end it, praise God. I can go on and on, but I need to end it, praise God. And this, this is going to be a book and I'm going to teach it online, praise God, in a course, but you get ready. It's going to be a blessing to you. Now, I, I thought that today, as the Lord began speaking to me, he says that talk about their faith, amen, to have courage, amen, because you need faith to have courage because your faith is what defines your courage. And, um, and then talk about the nutrition, talking about food and, and then the power of fasting and, and then how to remain focused in the midst of all of this. And I said, well, Lord, who, what, what biblical character or characters that I could share with the people today as we continue to teach on living your best life? And he told me, praise God, to talk about these four characters talking about Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and a bad Negro, a bad Negro. <laughs> and a lot of times we talk about the three Hebrew boys, but it was four boys. You know, one was Daniel, you know, and one, the other three were Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Then we're going to talk about all three, all four, but our focus today is going to be on these three Hebrew boys. Now, the biblical story about these three Hebrew boys, they were Jewish men whose, whose Hebrew names were actually not, they didn't start off with the names that, that we know, but their names were uh, Haniah, Mishael, and Azariah, and their friend named Daniel. They begins with, it begins with four of them, as I said, and they have been taken captive. Now, they were taken from their homes in Jerusalem in 605 BC during a siege by Nebuchadnezzar. Of Babylon. Now, that's important for you to understand that backdrop. Now, all four of these young men were very intelligent. They were handsome men, and 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 so when they were captured, uh, they were likely, you know, they probably came from a royal family, you know, especially the three your other three young men. Then the king instructed uh, Aspenas, uh, the master of his Enoch's, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants. And some of the nobles, young men, so this tells us there that they had probably were nobles of royalty. He says, young men in whom there was no blemish in them, but he said they needed to be good looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge and quick to understand, who had ability to serve in the king's palace and whom they might teach the language and literature of the Chaldeans. Now, you find that in Daniel chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Now, unlike most victorious kings like Nebuchadnezzar, who typically only allow people from their own ancestry or their own ethnicity to rule while enslaving all subject, uh, sub subjugated people, King Nebuchadnezzar, determined to train for governmental service those with the best minds among the people within his kingdom. It had nothing to do with race. He wanted to always have the best. Now, Daniel and his three friends were selected by uh, Azpiznaz, the chief court official, for a three-year program in which they would be trained, they would be taught the language and the literature and the customs of the Babylonians. 
Now, one of the first things that happened to these four young men, we see it in verse 7, was the changing of their names. Now, as Matthew Henry notes in his commentary, he says their Hebrew names, which they received at their circumcision, had something to of something in, in their names that re, reminded them of God or Yah or Jah in them. Now, Daniel, God is my judge. It, that's what his name. Hananiah, the grace of the Lord. Mishael, he that is a strong God. And Azariah, the Lord is a help. Now, to make them forget the God of their fathers, the God of their youth, they gave them names, the Bible says, that savored the, the Chaldeans idolatry. Beltezar signifies the keeper of the hidden treasures of Bel. Shadrach, Shadrach meaning the inspiration of the sun, which the Chaldeans often worshiped. Meshach of the goodness shack is what it means, under which names Venus was worshiped. And then Abednego, the servant of the shining fire, which they worshiped also. Now, you see that in Daniel's chapter 1, verse 1 through 7. Now, the diet was being tested while their faith was being tested. And this is very important today because while there were others in the training program, verse 10 and 19, Daniel and his three friends soon stood out because of the food and the drink they wished to consume. Now, although Daniel was apparently... Uh, the first to resist the king's food and the king's drink, we see it in verse 8, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are soon shown to have the same mindset in verse 10. I want you to follow along with me. Now, we are told specifically why Daniel didn't want to defile himself with the king's provision in verse 8. It was likely because the king's food may have included meat of animals that God said were not to be eaten, as we see in Levit Leviticus chapter 11 and Deuteronomy 14. Or it could have included some animal fat, which God was not, uh, which God said was not to be eaten either, praise God, found in Leviticus 7.23. Now, as to why Daniel and his friends would have refused the wine, which was permitted by God to consume in moderation, it could have been because part of the wine may have been used as a drink offering to a heathen either uh, a, a, a heathen deity. You know, you're hearing what I'm saying, and 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 so uh, although the Babylonian overseer was reluctant to grant Daniel and his three friends requests to not eat the king's daily provisions for them, he granted them a ten day trial on the food and drink they proposed to him. Because they appeared healthy at the end of the test period, they were allowed to eat the diet of vegetables and water that they had requested. Are you hearing me? Now, what are you saying here, Dr. Greg? I'm going to tell you in just a minute. So at the end of the 10 days, hear me now, their features appear to look better and and fatter in the flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies. Thus, the steward took away their portion of delicacies and the wine that they were to drink and gave them vegetables. We see it in verse one, chapter 1, verse 15 through 16. Now, there is something important here, a lesson to be learned. Uh, if first, uh, praise God, it's the first test of their faith. Oh, glory to God. And this is a, a lesson for you and I. It would have been relatively easy for them to have reasoned that since they were now captives in a foreign land, they should just go along with the king, go along with the king's program, go along with the king's training, go along with the king's diet, and, and, and go on and just eat it anyhow. But they didn't abandon their faith, and they didn't abandon, praise God, their diet. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Real faith means, here it is, that you are going to obey God under extreme pressure. 
under difficult circumstances, under tough times when no one is looking, as we will soon see, the relatively small test of faith lay the foundation for more, uh, praise God, challenges, praise God, that they would be faced with. Now, I want you to understand, praise God, what, what am I saying in this message today? I'm saying, praise God, as you examine your nutritional habits, as you examine your diet, as you examine your health, uh, oh my God, you're going to have to make some decisions on what you've been putting in your mouth. You know, you're going to have to make some decisions about, praise God, what you've been feeding your children. Oh, my goodness. See, when we talk about the generational curse, so often, you know, we think about things that has nothing to do with food. But see, you're going to have to realize that food plays your nutritional habits, plays a major portion, praise God, on the future of your future offsprings. Because whatever you teach them is what it is that they're going to do. Now, it's obvious that Daniel and, praise God, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, praise God, they were raised differently. They were raised, praise God, to eat vegetables and water, amen, and they did not sway away from what they had been taught. So I want you to understand you may be in a different situation. You're going to have to make up your mind, praise God, what are you going to do about your health? You know already, praise God, you're reading article after auto, YouTube after YouTube about, praise God, all kind of toxins and all kinds of things that's going on. Your doctors are telling you, you lay off the sugar, all the lay off the sweets, lay off the flour products, the candy and the cookies. And oh my God, we all have been raised in that environment. And then praise God, learn how to cook healthy. Amen. And I'm, this is not a lesson today on food and nutrition, but it's about food faith, and, and, and praise God, and, and, and your courage to stand up and stay focused, amen, while you're, you, while you're under trial, while you're being tested, while you're at that Sunday dinner, while you're at that family reunion, and everybody else is eating that food that they've been raised on, and you were raised on it, but you know that you know that you cannot eat it anymore because you have made a decision that you want to live. You made a decision that you want to save your children. You made a decision that the buck stops here. Oh my God goodness gracious. Oh, glory to God. So at the end of the three-year program, talking about Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, then Daniel, at the end of the training, Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego had their oral exam before King Nebuchadnezzar. Now, based upon these interviews, the king considered them the brightest Listen to me, because they ate, didn't eat the king's food, didn't drink the king's drink. Listen to me, they were all vegetables and water. Hello, he said, oh, Dr. Greg, I can do plant-based. Oh, come on now. Maybe you're not ready to do it completely, but start somewhere. Get those plant-based. This is why, I, and this is not a message to promote my product, that it works, glory to God. And it's called Rafa, and the Rafa is the Lord thy God that healed thee, and it's all plant-based, organic, and it's vegetables and herbs. Hello, glory to God. And you just mix it with water. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness gracious. But they then praise God. People who have been taking it, they're finding out that they become the what? Just like this. They became the brightest and the wisest. Praise God. They're able to see better. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Their diabetes has diminished. If some of them don't have it anymore. Their high blood pressure. I can go on and on. We'll talk about that another time. But this is what happened to these young men. We see that in verse 18 through 20, because as they entered into the king's service, these men were wise, just like the king wanted them. They were wiser than all the rest. They, they, they were the brightest. They were more capable than all the rest. And in all matters of wisdom, the Bible says in verse 20, an understanding about which the king examined them, he found them to be 10 times better than all the magicians and glory to God and astrologers who were in all of his realm. Do you see that? I'm here to tell you today, praise God. God is raising you up, praise God. And if you're going to get that promotion, it might be because you changed your diet. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, in the second chapter of Daniel, it records a serious development within, praise God, the Babylonian system of government that threatened the lives of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, the king had a dream that greatly troubled him, and he was anxious to know its meaning. You see that in Daniel's chapter 2, verse 1 and 3. So he called for his musicians and the wise men and counselors to interpret his dream in verse 2 and 3. Now, making 
the situation especially dire, the king would not tell what his dream was to those he summoned to interpret his dream. He demanded that they both tell him his dream and interpret or they would be destroyed. You see that in verse nine, four through nine. Now, of course, King ne ne of, of course, King the King Nebuchadnezzar's magicians and wise men could not fulfill his request. So, as a result, the king gave a command to destroy all the wise men of Babylon, which included Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. See that in verse twelve. Now, faced with this predicament. Daniel asked the king for time to fulfill his demand. Daniel then made this decision known to Hannah, Hanina, uh, 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 Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they might seek mercy. Talking about Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. That's the name that they gave him, you know, from the, from the Chaldeans, right? So, 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 so what, what we see here is that Daniel and his companions, uh, he wanted a strategy so that they would not be perished with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Now, in the third chapter of Daniel, turn with me if you have your Bibles, we find a third great test for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. While the two previous incidents included their friend Daniel, he is not included in this particular test. Scripture does not say why Daniel is not mentioned here. The implication is that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego faced this trial without the support or counsel of, David, of Daniel. Now, this test occurred over the worship of a golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar had built in the plain of Dura. Now, the king's command was, was for all of his subjects to do what? To bow down and worship his image. Anyone who would not do so was to be thrown into the fiery furnace. This is where it all started and it gets hot. We see that in verses 5 and 6. Now, because Meshach, Shadrach, and that bad Negro would not violate the second commandment by worshiping idol images, Babylonian officials reported these men's lack of compliance in verse 8 through 12. Now the king then angrily summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, glory to God, and commanded that they bow down to his idol. And if they would not do so, praise God, they would be thrown into the fiery furnace. Follow along with me, glory to God. Now, taunting them, the king said, and who is the God, small g-o-d, who will deliver you from my hand? We see that in verse 15. Now the three young men res responded. Listen to what they said in verse 16 through 18. They said, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. I love their spirit. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, small g-o-d-e-s, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Oh my God, this thing angered, praise God, the king, and the king had the furnace, praise God, turned seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of his mighty men of valor to bind these young men, put, a, pray, put them in straits and, 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 and for, for being in noncompliance and, 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 and throw them into the fiery furnace, oh my God, but several strange things things begin to happen. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, follow along with me, saints. Hallelujah. Now, while the men who threw Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach and Abednego into the fiery furnace, the Bible says they were killed by the heat of the fire. Only, and, it, and, and, and the heat of the fire only consumed the binding, meaning the, the ropes or the chain that were binding Meshach, Shadrach and that bad Negro. Are oh, you listening to me? The three men then Miraculous got up and walked around unharmed in the fire. King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished by what he saw. Not only were the three Jewish men walking free and unhurt with the 
in the fire, the king saw a fourth person whose form was like the son of God, probably better translated as a son of the gods. Now, Nelson, study Bible, translated it as that, okay? As a divine being, according to the King Nebuchadnezzar, also walking in the fire. This first person, praise God, may have been a manifestation, I believe. Praise God of Christ. <laughs> ah, hallelujah. I just believe Jesus, praise God, just even before he was born in the form of man, God in the form of man, walked in that fiery furnace, glory to God, and uh, having witnessed this miraculous protection of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the king called them out of the fire and made a decree that people were not not to speak anything amiss against the God, capital G-O-D, who had saved these three men. That's why I believe Kev Nebuchadnezzar, he had to realize, praise God, that this was not, praise God, a small G-O-D. He had to realize this must be the God that the Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego said would deliver them. Hallelujah! He was witnessing, praise God, what they spoke. Uh, uh, this goes back to going back to what I told you before. You are what you say you are. Watch what you say. Watch what you think. Praise God. It was obvious that Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they stood, praise God. They stayed focused on who they were and who their God was. Hallelujah. Not on what the king was doing. I'm telling you, we're in an age today that you're going to take have to take a stand. You got to take a stand for your family. You got to take a stand, praise God, if you want to live your purpose you want to live your dream. You want to live your best life. You're going to have to stand up to what everybody else is doing. And you're going to stand because you're going to, they're going to see the hand of God move miraculously in your life. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, this is a new season that we're entered into. It's the season of the Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego's. Oh, my God. Why, Daniel chapter 1, praise God. Verse 21 tells us that Daniel continued to serve in Babylonian, in the Babylonian courts until Cyrus, the first ruler of the, of the Persian Empire, came to power. The Bible doesn't tell us anything about these young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, after they survived being thrown into the king's fiery furnace. But the Bible records covering these three men' lives ends in Daniel 3. But, however, when we read Hebrews 11, the hall of fame of all the faithful men and, and men and women of God, it documents examples of old and many Old Testament biblical characters included appear to be a reference not by name to these three young men. While the, their names are not specifically mentioned, verse 34, Hebrews 11, speaks of People who quench the violence of fire. <laughs> oh my God, hallelujah. So let me close by telling you some things that it takes. Whether this is the author of the book of Hebrews that when he wrote it, that he had in mind or not, is not important right now. Praise God. I want you to know the day your book is being written. Here it is. Uh, you're going to have to have faith to obey God in big trials. Praise God. And little ones. We need to prepare in advance by being obedient in the, even in the small things. See, life challenges sometimes escalate in intensity and, and potential consequences. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego decision do not, uh, to, to not defile themselves with the king's food and drink seems Seems to have been a test of their obedience uh, and to remain focused, to remain faithful, to remain, praise God, fortified. Hallelujah. We must make a decision about the type of food, uh, the type of drink uh, that we're going to put in our bodies. Uh, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The test of faith often focus on resisting the world's influence. You're going to the second thing, you're going to have to resist what the world is doing, what they say. Even though Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they face intense pressure to conform to the Babylonian customs. They refuse to obey, praise God, they refuse to obey Nebuchadnezzar, to obey their God. Hallelujah. Oh, you're going to have to do the same thing today. Number three, our test of faith will ultimately determine whether we will receive eternal life. Your one mistake, praise God, I don't care about all the good things you've done in the past, that one decision, praise God, to compromise 
lives, praise God, can take you to hell. Hallelujah. The physical lives of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were on the trial. They were on, line, on the line. At least two of the three tests they faced. In the bigger picture, our spiritual lives are on the line. What are we going to do? What are you going to do when you're under the test? I come to tell you today, this is that season that God is looking for the Meshach, Shadrach, and the Abednego. Goats. He's looking for those that are going to stand the test. He's looking for those that are going to be found faithful. He's looking for those who are going to be, praise God, focus in the midst of a trial. He's going to look for those, praise God, that in the midst of it, they develop a habit of fasting. I call it intermittent fasting. Praise God. And that's just simply stop eating around seven o'clock. Praise God. Don't give your body a chance to rest. If you wake up at seven, that's 12 hours. Praise God. And then take another hour, glory to God, to pray and, and to spend time with God. Hear what he has to say for the day. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's 13 hours. And then praise God as you grow with that into another three hours, 16 hours, and then eat within those eight hours. Try not to go, go to bed stuff. Praise God. Give your body two to three hours to rest before you go to sleep. I'm telling you, praise God. I'm talking about living your best life. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they made a decision, praise God, that they're going to stay focused. They're going to stay faithful. They're going to stay fruitful by what they say, and they're going to stay fortified. They knew that God would, God would rescue them, even though they were thrown in the fiery furnace, even though the fire was stirred up seven times hotter, my brothers and sisters, they did not give in to what the king was doing. What about you? Will you stand the test? Will you make a decision on your job? Will you make a decision, praise God, when you go to dinner and everybody else is eating the fried foods and all the other stuff and the broth for seafood that's full of sodium and you know you got high blood pressure? You got to see yourself dying early because it, it, it affects your lifespan. Make some decisions today. I'm talking about living your best life. This is Dr. Greg Thompson. I pray you got something about this series. Praise God. I'll be telling you more about it. How Praise God about the classes we're going to be having. And also, praise God, how you can obtain a copy of the book. Until next time, remember that the spirit of greatness is upon you. The seed of greatness lives within you. Praise God. It's time for you to live your best life. I'll see you again next time. You've been listening to Christian Faith Ministries broadcast, where Drs. Greg and Deidre Thomas are the pastors. If you've been blessed and desire to give, you need prayer, or simply want more information about upcoming events or training, go to cfmnola.org. Welcome to the IMLACA Basic Boot Camp. You may be asking the question, what does IMLACA stand for? IMLACA is the abbreviation for International Marketplace Leaders and Chaplaincy Academy. The purpose of launching IMLACA is because the world as we've known it is changing rapidly daily. When the coronavirus pandemic hit in 2019, the entire world shifted from an industrial way of doing things in the marketplace to a digital way. However, one thing that has not changed and will never change is people are suffering and the need for marketplace ministry leaders in business, government, and the church that are equipped, trained, and released as ordained men and women of God as chaplains around the world. This academy was created with you in mind. Yes, you. You've always wanted to be used by God, to be a servant leader in the marketplace, to pray for the sick, perform weddings, christenings, officiate over funerals, and much more. I believe our God has handpicked you for the IMLACA. This course is online, open book, self-paced, self-study, and self-test. Upon completion, you will participate and receive the following. One, Certificate of Completion. Two, you'll participate in an online or in-person ordination and graduation ceremony. By that time, you'll receive your ordination and graduation certificates, signet ring, chaplaincy badge, and lapel pin, digitally or by express mail.